Boruto's whole world has been turned upside down in two blue vortex due to the effects of Ada's omnipotence. Boruto Uzumaki is now Boruto the Betrayer. In the latest chapter, we see one of his closest friends, Mitsuki, turn against him. A battle to the death will ensue with Boruto vs Mitsuki arriving in the next chapter. But what if I told you this fight holds the key to reversing the effects of omnipotence? So, Omnipotence is a Shinjutsu claim to only be used by the gods in the Naruto Boruto universe. The effect is to bring out the user's desires. So, it's essentially a programming language of the god tier characters that has been used to create worlds and make anything a reality. Now, Ada used this power to rewrite the memories of everyone on a global scale, and now everyone perceives that Kawaki is the son of the 7th Hokage and Boruto is just a mere outsider who killed the 7th Hokage and tried to take his son's life. So omnipotence also suppresses any lingering sense of contradiction in those affected when presented with visual evidence of the truth. So with this being said, how could a character affected by omnipotence start to see the light towards the truth of the world they live in? It'll start with Boruto versus Mitsuki. This unlocks the truth. So when Boruto and Mitsuki start clashing in their fight that is inevitable at this point, when we get into chapter seven of Boruto 2 Blue Vortex, they're gonna be putting out a lot of raw emotions on the forefront of their minds and hearts. So this is a battle between best friends and Mitsuki realistically doesn't even know that he's fighting one of his best friends. But Boruto, he has to bear the burden of fighting one of the people that has been closer to him as he's grown up so this is one of the key things i want you to remember before this fight it has been shown in the naruto series and said that when two shinobi are of high enough level they can read each other's thoughts through no more than a trade of blows basically they don't need to say a word to understand each other this is how boruto and mitsuki will come to an understanding that will help Mitsuki overcome the effects of omnipotence. By exchanging fists, aka fighting with Mitsuki using ninjutsu, Mitsuki will be able to see the truth inside of Boruto through the transfer of chakra while they fight. So this will allow them to actually connect again on a real level and for Mitsuki to see the truth. So it's really ironic that Mitsuki is the first friend that Boruto will be fighting after omnipotence happened and he'll likely be the first one that will be brought back to reality to who Boruto really is, which is Boruto Uzumaki, son of the 7th Hokage. He'll likely see himself in Boruto's mind as well as, you know, cause a lot of critical thinking within Mitsuki because if he's sensing Boruto's true emotions and sees inside his, his heart and he's able to read Boruto's thoughts, he's gonna realize, yo, this dude is actually like my best friend, like what is going on? So this is possible through the concept of Ninshu, which is a peaceful precursor to Ninjutsu. So Ninjutsu was basically like the aggressive evolved version of Ninshu, which the which Ninshu is the original creed of how chakra was supposed to be used. And this was developed by the Sage of Six Paths. So Ninshu embodied that chakra was a power that linked everyone in the world and everything in the world. And it was to be used to give people a better understanding of themselves as well as others. So chakra was literally meant to connect people so that they could, you know, understand people without saying a word to those. So when it evolved into ninjutsu some of those characteristics carried over but they were more put across when characters duped it out and fought you know emotional battles to where they put you know everything on the line they could understand each other through the chakra that was being transferred when they clash with these different ninjutsu and different attacks so so continuing the sage of six paths demonstrated his principles of ninshu by sharing chakra in a way that was intended to establish a connection between individual spiritual energy so this sharing of chakra was meant to foster like i said before an understanding among people without the need for verbal communication enabling them to sense each other's feelings 
and you know wish for each other's well-being that was the original ninjutsu that was peaceful and then my boy the sage of six paths son indra which is like the og emo uchiha guy came in and started using hand seals to develop a new variation of ninshu that was based upon combat so at the end of the day ninjutsu derived from ninshu and uh, people still use it today like that's just what it ended up being but you know ninjutsu is rooted in ninshu so if you use ninjutsu against each other and you're high enough level shinobi you're gonna understand a lot about each other without saying a word because of how chakra goes between two parties uh now i kind of want to touch on some points in the series that have shown this concept of chakra connecting people and allowing people to understand each other through chakra so one of the more dope examples of the principles of ninshu actually carrying over to the modern naruto world was an instance with killer b and his ability to interpret the hearts of others through you know a fist bump he can read into someone's thoughts and memories transmit his own and he can appear in their mental landscape so this let killer b recognize people who he wasn't really familiar with and understand really who they are through their connection with chakras another time where we see the true origins of ninjutsu ninshu come full circle is when in the fourth grade ninja war naruto distributed his chakra and kurama's chakra across the allied shinobi force as a way to protect his ninja during the fourth great ninja war and they were able to see into naruto's memories in a in a slight way and feel you know what naruto was feeling so that was literally ninshu was made to do that so that people can be on the same train of thought with people without having to actually speak a word so it's crazy how we see mainly jen Cherokees use uh iconic examples of ninshu considering that the sage of six paths is the one who wanted the tail beast to really have a good connection with the humans and it ended up being the jen Cherokee that could come the closest to the original ninshu creed or way of using chakra in the modern day so between this fight between boruto and mitsuki there's going to be a lot of high level ninja action the fight is going to be great i'm really going to enjoy the fight because it's going to be an emotional fight it's between two characters that grew up on the same team and mitsuki you know how important boruto is to him so he is going to be fighting kind of on a vengeance tip because he doesn't know that Boruto is actually Boruto. He thinks that he's Kawaki's place. So he's going to be fighting him in a way that's like seeking vengeance against his best friend. So with that being said, it's not just a petty fight. It's actually like a super emotional fight. And we've seen with most of the emotional fights in the Naruto series that characters end up going into each other's mental landscape and they end up seeing a lot of the character's thoughts and it's in their heart why they are having these incredible drawn out battles and i i mean i don't think that this is going to be a super drawn out battle boruto outclasses mitsuki but i think that boruto will do enough to where mitsuki will understand yeah something's not right and after the fight mitsuki will come to his senses and say that feeling that i felt during the fight with boruto like this is Boruto Uzumaki, but of course he's going to be defeated at that point. But then Mitsuki is going to have his own road to redemption where he has to atone for betraying Boruto's trust due to the effects of omnipotence. But I think that this will have a great storyline in terms of Mitsuki coming back after he's defeated because I think he's going to actually go back to the sound village to get paired by orochimaru after he gets bodied by boruto boruto's not gonna kill him but mitsuki's gonna be coming at boruto with intent to kill with that bloodlust that we've seen at the end of naruto next generations and in these couple chapters mitsuki trying to pack boruto up so he's gonna get packed back up to the sound village and then when he recovers he's gonna realize the true emotions that were present when he fought boruto and Mitsuki's gonna help him uh, in his quest to take down these Shinju clones, even though Mitsuki can't really help against these Shinju clones. Maybe because he has Sage Jutsu, and that's really like a rarity in the series. Not that many characters have that ability, but I, that's really my theory regarding how omnipotence can be reversed. It's been in front of us this whole time. The, the series loves going back to original creeds and ideals that were established early on in the series. And I feel like 
it's crazy to see it, everything come full circle how Boruto can restore his his life is by reflecting on the origins of Ninju to itself and really tapping into the Sage of Six Paths thought process with this. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. How hyped are you for this Boruto versus Mitsuki fight? This joint gonna be insane. But if you haven't, make sure you like the video up, subscribe if you're new, and you know appreciate y'all watching. It's been your boy Anime Analyst, the young Jiggy Ninja. I'm gone. Peace. Yeah.